Um, anyways, here we go. Let's read this. Guy from London. Guy from London. Look at this. All the way across the fucking pond. Needs advice about girl with STD. Jesus Christ, you guys are fucking killing me this week. I'm a Londoner who just discovered your stand-up podcast. I got to tell you, you're one of the best. Can we, thank you, man. That's fucking awesome. You know how great that is? To hear from another country, you make me laugh from the pit of my stomach, which is a pretty special gift to give someone, so thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see if I can help you out of your fucking problem here. Anyway, I'm writing you because I just joined a dating website. I don't know how you feel about online dating, but my opinion has always been that it's fucked up. Who needs to join a website to get laid who isn't in some way a fucking lunatic, right? Um, I think that's the way it was in the beginning, but now it's becoming this phenomenal way of avoiding a cover charge and having to buy somebody a drink and just going right towards the chick you want. Uh, Nino! What's going on? My girl just walked in. Fucking brutal questions this week. You want to hear just the titles of these questions? Uh, Or just one in general? Um, I guess it was just this one. Friend is going to be a dad trying to get him to kill it. What? Yeah. No, I already answered it. I just uh-huh. uh, she, you know that that whole pro-choice thing. Are you pro-choice? The choice is really the woman's. You know, right. if she wants to vacuum it out, like the Hoover's getting turned on, and uh, <laughs> if if oh my god, what? Could you not say it like that? When a guy makes a joke like that, even though you've never had a kid, do you still feel a little quivering in there? No, I do not. No, you do not. What other disgusting question? You look really good. Thank you. You do. Um, you want to you want to help me with this one? Guy from London needs dating advice about girl with STD. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, so he 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 always thought the online dating things were uh, those online dating websites were just filled with a bunch of psychos because right. who can't just get laid? But at this point, I I think it's it's normal now. Yeah. It's totally normal now to do online stuff. It's not like I don't think there's a stigma attached to it anymore. Plenty All of right. people do it. Well, I think there's an STD attached to it. Let me read the rest of this. <laughs> Uh, so I'd avoided it, uh, being more than capable of hooking up in real life. But my problem is uh, that for about two years now, that's all I've been doing, hooking up, dating, meeting girls who never do that thing to me. Oh, nobody that he falls in love with. I feel like a husk, a 31-year-old. I don't know what that means. This guy's from London. Okay. I guess that means like the old guy at the bar. 31-year-old and I'm dead inside. Oh, I see. He's dead inside because no girl can make me feel how I used to. In the school playground oh, with the, the, the first crushes. Uh, the thing that makes you want to make pancakes in the morning for her or walk through the park or put on some Lionel fucking Richie. <laughs> <laughs> all they want to do is come home lately. Uh, all they want to do after I come lately is wash her off my dick and bounce her out. Yep, yep, I've been there. Which is no way to hey. live. What? Nia, I banged a lot of broads before I met you. And that was the thing. You were like, yeah, the second you did, you jumped up. You said, hang on a second, let me get, let me, you acted like you were getting something for her, and you went in there, and she figured it out when she heard the sink was on too long, that you had your dick in the sink, and you were washing it off. I used to, I used to take the hand fucking soap, and just fucking act like all I was right, jerking right, off with all soap. Right, all right. And that's why I have the clean cock I have today. All right, plowing ahead. The thing that makes you want to, blah, 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 okay, uh, which is no way to live, I'm actually a romantic Guy, I cry at Disney movies. Oh, Jesus, dude, I don't want to read this shit. I fall. I want to fall in love again. It sounds like lyrics to a Lionel Richie song. It's 2011. People join these sites, so I made a profile. Anyways, this is a fucking long ass email. Okay, so anyways, he's on this fucking website. Anyway, after two weeks, I'm probably thinking about shutting down the profile. The only notable exception so far being a divorcee who does yoga. She invites me to a bar. We have a drink. She complains of being tipsy and needing to drive. I ask what she wants to do. She corks up the bottle and takes me back to her place and literally takes a run at me. It was nuts too. Kind of seedy. Like she'd watched some porn after the, after the split with her husband, decided that that was the way the world was now and decided to emulate it for real. So I'm banging a mature, granted pretty hot mature woman, who's looking at me with this angry look on her face, that porn star fuck face thing that makes me feel uneasy (laughs) already. While saying things like, do you like that, huh? That dick is nice and warm in my pussy, huh? Jesus Christ, are you gonna... Are you going to blow your nuts right inside this pussy? Yeah. And she's saying it with the English accent, too. That's fucking hilarious. And I'm just feeling a bit sad inside as I nod. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
Anyways, this is the thing. I meet this girl, 26, beautiful, and I mean beautiful. She looks like a little elf or something. That just made it creepy. And Angel, smoking, and she's smart, funny, kooky, but in a good hot way. Probably that danger is going to break your heart way, too, but I'm a sucker for that. Anyway, we go for a walk around the zoo, not really giving a shit about the animals because we're too into each other. Like, uh, hey, look, an aardvark. Oh, you have really pretty hair. It was great. I'm not, the, I'm not a bad person after all. My heart is beating again for this girl. I feel happy. Where's the STD thing here? All right, so we leave the zoo, go to the bar for a kiss. It's amazing. Electricity. Then she goes, I've got to tell you something. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. You got to admit, at that point, you were worried that she had a dick, right? There's something I have to tell you. Um, I have three nipples, and I'm married to seven different men in Iraq, uh, which is the sentence you don't want to hear on a first date, blah, blah, blah. So she, anyways, oh, no, I just looked ahead. Oh, Jesus, brace yourself. I look at her and I say, go on. And she goes on to tell me that a few months ago, she was seeing some guy who went down on her. And it turns out she had a cold, he had a cold sore on his mouth. And now she has herpes. Ugh. So she's got an incurable STD that can be passed on at any point. What do I do about that? Obviously, I get the hell out. I should be running as far from her pussy as I can, right? But I like her. I haven't liked anyone like this for a long time, but I also never had a disease. I look at my shit in that I look I look after my shit in that way. So, I'm in a dilemma. I like her, but she's damaged. She's what? she's a bit of a skank Why? in the past possibly, but she yeah. did the right thing and laid that on the table for me. What should I do? I'm clouded right now. How much I'm attracted to her? I need your help, Bill. Um, yeah, you get get the fuck out. What? Get out. Get out. Your advice is to get out? Yeah, you, you'll meet another girl, dude. You don't need to do that. Listen, she fucked up. You didn't whoa, fuck up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. I, I'm saying my she shit. Didn't, she, didn't, she didn't fuck up. Someone gave her a, an STD. It can happen Nia, to how do you, you don't know how she got the STD. That's just the story she told. Well, either way. Like, that shit happens. It's not like, A, it's not a death sentence, and B, you shouldn't judge people because they have an STD. Let me ask you. Do you she, wait, let wait, me wait. ask you a question. She takes, her, she takes all her meds. She is on top of it and makes sure that, you know, she doesn't have any breakouts. And if she does, she does what she needs to do. And they use protection the entire time. And he goes to his doctor and consults about, listen, my girlfriend has this. I don't want to catch it. What can we do? And or like, he yeah. finds someone with a clean pussy that makes his heart go pitter-patter. I don't, I don't think it's right to be like, no, stay away from her because she has herpes. Because it's like, people have STDs. It's not Listen, like- if you want to find the right person in life, you got to be selfish. Okay? And I don't know anybody who has on the list, when they think of their soulmate, nobody has herpes. No, of course not. <laughs> I, in an ideal world, you're both clean. Yeah, in an ideal be, world, you don't have fine. sores on your genitalia. I know, but sometimes that shit happens. And like, no, so no. Now this this is what they need, need to do. They need to have... A, a a herpes social network. And people can just meet each other on the herpes social network. <laughs> and they can just pass it back and forth to each other. And they don't matter. have to worry about it. Yeah, and then they can they can go halvesies on their herpes meds, and it's all good. <laughs> no, no then halvesies. It, then it's all good. I don't think halvesies is good. I'm preaching I STD think, segregation. I'm, I'm preaching STD Separate but equal tolerance. social website. I think it should be tolerance, and I think he should talk to her about it. She probably knows everything that she needs to do in terms of medication I think you're full of shit. I think if the guy had sores on his dick, he, you'd be like, you'd be like, girl, and you start rolling your head like you were on a talk show. No, you need to get out that shit. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> if you really like the guy or girl, then you should just talk about it. You know, what do they say? Like in Manhattan, like one in three people has an STD now. Please don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but something insane where like STDs are like through the roof. So obviously you should do everything in your power to protect yourself. But again, he's also just dating this girl. He doesn't have to sleep with her right away. Then there's no fucking point. There's no fucking point as a guy. see how it goes and you know Let me finish. There's no point in being, there's no point in being with the woman unless you're going to bang. There's no fucking point. Well, I understand that, but they could have like an open conversation about it. They could go to the doctor together. They can like, they can have a mature open line of communication about it. Look, I'm not, if you actually, if you feel like this girl's the one, 
then. I mean, that's pretty powerful, the fact that she has herpes and you're still being like, you know. But Exactly. I, 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 and he's, uh, easy, he's easy, easy, easy. And up and down fucking Camden Street. Or yeah, and, he, and he's been careful. And he's been he's careful. Yeah, and, and he kept his breastplate on. He fucking had his, he, he had his condom on. Anyone can catch an STD, especially through oral sex, because how many people are using condoms when they go down on a guy, and how many people are using dental dams? Nobody. Nobody All right, can, 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 I, can, I, can I give some so one night? Can shit I? happens. So if you're going to be doing that kind of stuff, yes, one needs to be aware that that could happen. All right, I'm going to give some one night stand advice from a dirty, filthy old man. All right? I haven't had a one night stand in seven years. So what? So what? Do you know? So what? So you've forgotten I all about it. You don't have it anymore. You're done, baby. I got you. It's <laughs> over. All right, wait a minute. This is what you do. One of the first things you want to do. Is you want a romancer, so you get out your you get you get out your George Michael uh, cassette tape. <laughs> no, this is the thing. Okay, certain things don't change. Certain things don't change. Okay, one night stand. You never, ever, ever repeat ever go down on somebody. You don't do anything. Okay, I don't even kiss them. One night stand. You go in. You talk shit. You pull their fucking hair. You bend them over and you put on a condom and you bang them. That's what it is. What am I, trying to fucking be a gentleman? We're here to fuck. We are fucking. You do it just the way prostitutes do it. That's why prostitutes, you know, there, there's no fucking kissing anything. Did you want to bang me? Put a condom on. And you, you just do the act. You don't fuck it. You don't try to sit there and impress them. What do you mean impress them? You put on garden, gardener gloves. You finger pop them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't helping this guy at all. We're don't ever, don't ever. I'm trying to help other guys. Don't ever go down on a woman you don't know. Ever. You shouldn't do it ever. And you should wait until you guys are in a serious relationship and then have her get tested and make sure yeah, that, 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 that's that's let me for, finish, that you're too. not going down don't on go a down goddamn guy, sewer. Yeah, yeah. The same, same thing with same thing with women. Yeah. Guys, what guys stick their dicks? Half of them joined frats. They had a fucking ox at some point or some sort of farm animal. You never. Oral sex is for someone you, you're in love with. I don't give a shit if you're fucking into it. You, you just you don't do it, okay? So you can avoid something like this. So this is what I would say. Listen, if you think this girl's the one, then by, I was just trying to be funny. That by all means, I guess, you know, do it. But you're also early. early shh. You said it. You already said it. I don't need to say it again. People heard it. There's a rewind button. I'm I'm an I'm an I'm an hour. Well, go grab a grab a mic. They're right there in the closet. Yeah, why don't when you walk in here, just come in with a mic, and be prepared for the gig. Um. Yeah, don't ever go down on somebody in a one night stand. I really need to make that into a bumper sticker. Um. Last question: If he really likes, I said it, if he really likes her, then then definitely pursue it. But you know, also. Do you want to deal with this shit? And you also got to understand that you fall in and out of love with somebody in a relationship. And when you're falling out of love with them, when you're really getting mad, you're going to be thinking herpes shit. You fucking cold sore fucking motherfucker. You're going to be thinking crazy shit. Exactly. Just don't – I mean if you're going to pursue her or whatever, don't be using that as in your back pocket to throw in her face. Because like I said, anyone can get an STD at any time. It doesn't mean you're a slut or you're a dirty guy that does a bunch of stuff irresponsibly. Sometimes shit happens. It's life. And other times you are you, other times other times you're a filthy fucking whore, a man whore or a female whore. And what you do is you gotta listen to you. When you got an STD, you're fucking damaged goods. So you gotta come up with the fucking story. I, I this girl one time told me she had herpes. She told me she had it on her knee. What? She said she was in a hot tub. She told me she told me she was in a hot tub. Someone in there had it. She scraped her knee and she just got it on her knee. And as long as she didn't, in this quadrants of nerves, and as long as she didn't stress, it wouldn't fucking move. And gradually, she starts telling me more of the story, and it magically moved up to her fucking vajayjay. Yeah, she had fucking genital herpes, and she didn't fucking tell me. Fortunately, I wore a goddamn condom. And the second she told me the knee story, I was like, shoving off the buffalo, shoving off the buffalo. You know, everybody, if you're out there, that you, you know, you, you run into shit. Let me tell you about a story so true We're so meet style and it's all so cool It's about a garment torn and frayed Getting this bread, the story conveyed Walking down the streets with holes in my teeth These rip things here, part of me you see It ain't about the brand of the label they hold It's about the journey, the stories it unfolds In these ragged clothes I find my voice A testament to resilience, my choice From the streets to the stage I rock my style In my tattered shirt I walk that mile
ripped and torn, but still I stand in my ragged attire. I command, it's not just fabric, it's a statement. I preach in my threadbare garment, I find my reason. From the barrio to the bar, I make my mark In my worn out jeans, I leave a spark And they call it rags, but I call it art And every stitch and tear, I play my part It's a struggle in the streets, the hustle's so real In my tattered jacket, I seal the deal A symbol of defiance against the status quo My passion, my pants, I let it show It's not about the riches or the wealth I lack In my faded hoodie, I stay on track It's the heart of the hustle, the grind each day In my worn out kits, I find my way Ripped and torn, but still I stand In my ragged attire Command. It's not just fabric, it's a statement I preach In my threadbare garment I find my reach So here's to the ones with the clothes that tear In our patched up attire We have, so let the world see our garments worn For in our rags, our stories are born in the language of the streets we speak in our torn up clothes we find our peak okay but that's why you you always wear a fucking condom always always and yes and guys there's a lot of guys out there who can't fucking maintain a fucking erection because they're so used to raw dog and that if you put that on it feels like they're wearing a winter coat all right this is what you got to do don't jerk off for a few days and then try it because then you'll just be psyched. Anything is even remotely touching you down there. Or rub one out with a condom. Just get used to it. It sucks, but I'm telling you, there's, there's got to be nothing worse than fucking waking up and having that shit, you know? Of course. It's terrible. And you and she probably feels really bad and embarrassed about it. So it's like, I don't know. And she could also be lying how she got it. She could be like him. She could have been a fucking whore going out banging everything, and that's how she got it. Yeah, and you're, and you're right, and people need to take responsibility. If you get herpes, you need to take, like, 50% of it. You're 100% right. But I'm just saying, I would just feel bad if someone was like, oh, I have herpes, and nobody, you know, wants to be with me, even though I'm trying to... I know, you're right. I'm, try, I'm trying to be funny. I'm all trying to be funny, but I'm also trying to give this guy some good advice. Yeah. Some good advice. You know, you don't have to settle in life, but if you feel like this person's the one, then definitely pursue it, but don't be fucking just sitting there... You know, the worst way to go into a relationship is if you feel bad for somebody. I feel bad. I want to help them. It's fucking pathetic. You don't want to do that shit. You want someone who's your equal. Or if not, bet, aim fucking. That's why I was telling this kid he wanted to go to a prom. I go fucking definitely go to your prom and ask some girl that you think's out of your league. So that's how you improve your life. You shoot hard. How the fuck did I end up with you? Huh? I, I, I'm definitely out of your. No, I had low self-esteem that night, and I was just like, ah, fuck it. Oh no, I'm just 